It's time to eat. What are you hungry for? Sit down and get ready to consume an abundance of fantasy football knowledge from Ross Tucker and Joe Dolan. Feed me now! I'm starving! On the Fantasy Feast Eating Podcast. Yeah, let's eat, baby! It is the Fantasy Feast Eating Podcast presented, of course, by DraftKings. The only place we are playing fantasy football, a little DFS action for the playoffs. I'm Ross Tucker. You know this, at Ross Tucker NFL on social media. I got two games I'll be at this weekend. Hopefully you guys get a chance to tune in. Westwood One Radio, pretty much any radio station that you got that listens to sports, I'll be on that this weekend. And of course, social media, at Ross Tucker NFL, Twitter or Instagram or Facebook.com slash Ross Tucker NFL to see the press box food. Can't wait to see what they got cooking in Buffalo for the Patriots and the Bills, as well as in Los Angeles for the Cardinals and the Rams. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. I think I said that three times now. Should probably transition to Joe Dolan, the fantasy gangster at FG underscore Dolan, the master of all he oversees. As one of the owners, check the name tag at fantasypoints.com. The code is 21 feast. Joe, very curious what content you guys have mm-hmm. specific to the postseason at fantasypoints.com this week and moving forward, which I guess also plays into what fantasy football. Yeah. You know, leagues, DFS, would you recommend? I know there, there's like some playoff only leagues too, right? Well, for sure. Well, I mean, obviously, Ross, the easiest one is DFS because it's the same exact thing as in the regular season, just with smaller slates. Uh, you're going to get, you know, the full wild card slate. You can get a Saturday only slate, Sunday only slate. There's going to be the Monday night showdown slate uh this week so obviously there's going to be those angles uh for for the playoff contest now there to me there are two main ways like you and your buddies will play there's uh the nffc you know has something called hold'em which is a little more complicated we do have a breakdown of that up at fantasypoints.com but there are two main ways to play well let's let's say three main ways to play in the playoffs number one is a, a draft you, we did this, our staff, and, and it was helpful for us to just kind of come up with our content because at fantasypoints.com, we wanted to come up with playoff rankings. So we did like a draft where each team can only, you can only take one player uh, and he can only be on one roster. We had a six man draft and it's total points for the entire playoffs. So not just do you want the best players, but you want the best players who are going to play multiple games. So for instance, a kicker who plays three games is going to be worth, maybe worth more than a quarterback who plays only one. So, like, there's a little bit extra angle in there. A third string wide, or a number three wide receiver who plays four games is going to be worth more than a number one wide receiver who plays just one. So, that's that's one and probably the simplest way to play. Um, I would recommend having maybe uh, six or eight teams, just something like that, playing a little bit of a super flex league as well. My favorite way to play, and I run a contest like this for my buddies, is one and done. Uh, and with one and done, you set a full lineup every week. You have the entire player pool available to you. Every team has the entire player pool available to them. But there's a twist. And the twist is you can only use a player once. So if I use Josh Allen in the first round of the playoffs, I can't use Josh Allen the rest of the way. So what does that mean? Well, if a team advances to the Super Bowl and you used all of their players in the first or second round of the playoffs, you're going to be SOL. So you need to have not just maximize your points in the wild card round, but you need to make sure you have enough points going forward. So that's a fun way to play, my favorite way to play. The other way to play, and um, this might be like a, a playoff pool that you might have been played in or invited to, is one player per team. So again, you have the entire list. This is a full playoff contest. You have the entire list of available players, but you can you pick a 14-man roster, but you can only pick one player per team. So if you pick Josh Allen, say goodbye to Stefan Diggs. If you pick Devontae Adams, say goodbye to Aaron Rodgers. If you pick George Kittle, 
say goodbye to Debo Samuel. So, you know, you have all this, this, this different strategy um, where you have to decide, okay, I know Patrick Mahomes is great, but I need to draft two tight ends on this team and I need to have Travis Kelsey. So there's really a lot of angles to that strategy as well. And those are some of the most fun ways to play playoff fantasy football. It is certainly something that's different than regular season fantasy football. But if you want your fix, there are plenty of ways to go about it. Absolutely, Joe. I love it. Uh, we will dive into all of that. I probably should mention now before I forget, we still do have one last uh, Bacardi player of the week. For week 18. Do you want to guess who it is? I, if I gave you 10 guesses, I don't know you could get it. The Bacardi Player, player of, of the, of week, the week, week for week 18. Okay. It's the DraftKings Performance of the Week presented by Bacardi Spice Drum. I'll give you some hints. Okay. He had 35.3 fantasy points last week. 35.3 fantasy points. Okay. Next hint. Two touchdown catches. Two touchdown catches. Next hint, a lot of people won't even know. Everybody knows who he is. Most people would not be able to tell you what team he plays for right now. A lot of people knows who he is. Most people wouldn't even be able to tell you what team he plays for right now. Okay. Um, oh, I really. I, Seven I, catches, 113 yards. This is fun. He was $3,000 on DraftKings. Seven catches, 113 yards. Everybody knows who he is. Slot receiver. They, he's a slot. Oh, Danny Amendola. <laughs> there you go. Slot receiver. That gave it to me. Dude, but think about that. Everybody listening. Like, we, yeah. okay, people listen to Fantasy Feast podcast or watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Ross NFL. They probably know that he plays for the Texans. But I'm telling you right now, if I ask my buddies, that are like diehard Steelers or Eagles fans, who does Danny Amendola play for? I highly doubt yeah. that they know he plays for the Texans. Meanwhile, he goes out against the Titans, seven catches, 113 yards, two touchdowns on eight targets, 35.3 fantasy points at only $3,000. So he is the DraftKings Performance of the Week presented by Bacardi Spice Rum. That was fun. I would like to do a show that's like just like a trivia show like that. Matt Camp and I used to do that on our weekend shows. Like Matt would try to stump me with some of these, and uh, like that one was close. But once you said slot receiver, I, I the performance popped in. Week eighteen is like a fever dream anyway, Ross, because you've got half the teams not playing for anything. You got teams like Dallas who inexplicably are playing their starters against fourth string guys, like. You know, it's always it's always weird to get the motivations, but yeah, once you said slot receiver, Danny Amendola's performance did pop into my mind. Well, what's convenient about the playoffs is that we only have six games. Yes. And I'm going to be at two of them, which means I'm going to be at the third of the games. But we only have six games. Speaking of convenience, by the way, if you're a today person, Joe, uh, you can get free same-day store pickup at AutoZone, where you can shop your way. If you're like me and my wife and you don't like to go to stores at all, even for pickup, then you can get free next day delivery. I am convinced that the FedEx, UPS, Amazon Prime guys live right at the end of my block and just come all day round, all day long circling it. You can even order, order as late as 10 p.m. Your package will arrive the next day. Every car is different. That means every car job is too. So the next time you're starting a job on your car, start it by shopping your way at AutoZone.com with their free same-day pickup, free next-day delivery. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Auto zone. No, okay, next time, Joe, I'll let you. I'll let you do the 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 clincher. All right. Okay. Raiders are at the Bengals, Joe. Mm -hmm. Let's talk Raiders, Bengals, fantasy football in particular. Who you like for you know the leagues we talked about earlier? Well, I mean, we're, we're looking at um, a really intriguing game. And I think maybe from an entertainment standpoint, this might be the game of the entire uh, weekend uh, in terms of potential points scored. A team that, you know, might be able to make a run. Um, we got a 48 and a half point total, uh, which is actually not the highest on the board. Um, 
Uh, as a matter of fact, there's actually three games higher than that, but uh, I might be tempted to take the over here. You know, obviously, both of these teams have played some extremely entertaining games in recent weeks with the Bengals and the Raiders. And let's start with the Bengals. Obviously, Joe Burrow is going to play. Joe Mixon's going to be back. Those guys did not play last week. The guy who stands out to me for Cincinnati in this game, you've got a great corner on the perimeter in Casey Hayward. I would think Casey Hayward is going to spend a lot of his time um, occupying uh occupying the time of jamar chase you got a great slot corner nate hobbs again we talked about him on last week's podcast i was surprised the later the raiders let him play after the dui arrest but winning trumps all ross um he's going to be occupying his time in the slot with tyler boyd i think t higgins is going to be the guy who is going to be the big beneficiary for the cincinnati Bengals. so that's a guy i really like this week on the dfs slate maybe you're one and done I really like T. Higgins in this game for the Cincinnati Bengals. So there is a guy who I am into for this particular contest. Um, uh, Joe Mixon, Joe, uh, Joe Burrow, obviously guys who you're going to want to play. Um, but if you're looking for one and done, DFS T. Higgins probably stands out to me as one of the better plays on the entire slate. And if you're flipping over to the Raiders, you know, it was good to see Darren Waller get back on the field last week, but he didn't really do a whole lot um those raider uh corners have uh, the bengal corners have been way better than anticipated but you know where the ball is going if you uh, if, if if you're a raider and, and you're watching the raiders it's going to hunter renfro he had just four catches last week and just 13 yards but two of them were touchdowns so hunter renfro is a red zone god at this point he's not just a slot machine he's a red zone god you saw him absolutely pants the corner from the Chargers on that route uh, for the first touchdown for the Raiders in that game. Um, Hunter Renfro is going to get the ball. He's going to get the ball quite a bit. I don't think I'd be leaving my one-and-done contests without playing T. Higgins and Hunter Renfro from this particular contest. And just a shout-out, by the way, to Josh Jacobs, who I think has looked better and better as the season has gone on. He played a hell of a game. He wore his big boy pants in a game where the Raiders <laughs> needed him 132 yards and a touchdown last week against the Chargers in the most entertaining regular season game, probably since the Rams and the Chiefs that uh, short number of years ago. Joe, I think that's a great point about Josh Jacobs. Um, he, he has been much better. They're blocking better. But, yeah, he has gotten better over the course that, of the That's season. the guy they drafted in the first round, Ross. And I know people have said, I don't know what they should do with his fifth-year option. The player that Josh Jacobs was in that game is going to get his fifth-year option picked up this offseason, in my opinion. Yeah, I would, I would tend to agree. All right, Joe, what about the uh, first game I'll be at? I will be in the booth for Western <laughs> 1. Steve Tasker will be on the sideline. God bless him because it's going to be single digits, maybe snowing. It's interesting that the total has already gone from 42 and a half up to 44 and a half. Hmm. And the Patriots were getting three and a half. Now they're getting four and a half for those of you that are so inclined. Although if that's the case, you should definitely listen or watch the Even Money podcast. Let's talk fantasy football, Joe. Let's talk Patriots Bills. Let's do it. Um, so this game is supposed to be frigid, Ross. You're, Steve Tasker's a tough guy. He played there for a number of years. He knows what it's going to be like on that field, doesn't he? He knows yeah. how to handle it. That, he does, but that doesn't mean it's any better. I mean, yeah. it means layers upon layers. It still sucks. Ross, you played there too. What's it like? So I will say this. Um, when I was in my 20s and 315 pounds <laughs> – it easier. still was really cold, but it didn't bother me as much. Here's the other thing that people don't realize. If you're starting, you're not cold. If you're a backup, you're freezing. Yeah. Makes all the difference. So I'm convinced the human body can only worry about one thing at a time. You ever have like, oh, your back hurts, but then you stub your toe and you immediately oh, totally yeah, forget about your back because yeah. your toe is killing you? It's the same thing. If you're an NFL player and it's cold, you're worried about the cold until Cortez Kennedy is across from you. And you're like, I don't give a crap about how cold it is right now. I'm trying not to let this man kill me on national TV. 
So, yeah, that that's a good point, Ross. You're going to be in the booth. I'm going to be at home. Actually, we're supposed to get hammered with snow this weekend in South Carolina, which does not appeal to me. Uh, but I'll be inside while I do that. I just didn't think I'd ever have to take a shovel out again. So I, I, I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing this game. And now here is the thing about the cold temperatures. Now, it doesn't look like wind is going to be a huge factor in this game, uh, which it was the last time these two teams played in the cold in Buffalo. But – Josh Allen comes out. He has not played well in cold weather. So Josh Allen has not played well in the, in those cold weather games. In 31 degrees or less, Josh Allen, 50, 50.3% completion, six touchdowns, seven interceptions. And Josh Allen has admitted, he comes out this week and says, you know, my feet get cold, my hands get cold. He called it like a circulation problem. So, uh, you know, they drafted Josh Allen, and by the way, they made the right decision. I'm not knocking that. But, like, a lot of the big analysis at the time was, oh, he's got that big arm to cut through that cold Buffalo air. Well, Josh Allen, the cold apparently bothers him. Remember, he's from California. You know, I know he went to Wyoming, but he is from California. So, just throwing that out there with Josh Allen. Now, there is one thing the Buffalo Bills can do that they could not do the last time these two teams played. Run the rock. Run the rock. Devin Singletary has been phenomenal. It is an option for them. That they did not have, even just, uh, it was six weeks ago, week 13, when those two teams played in that cold, and New England ran the ball down their throats. Buffalo couldn't do that. Buffalo can do that now. So I think Devin Singletary is somebody who's going to get the ball. He's going to get the ball early, and he's going to get the ball often in this game for the Buffalo Bills. So maybe a guy who stands out above the rest in terms of, hey, you know, Gabriel. Uh, obviously Stephon Diggs, Gabriel Davis, these are good players. Josh Allen, great player. But just standing out above the rest maybe is Buffalo's ability to run the football then you go to new england where you know they ran the ball like hell against buffalo the last time out damian harris goes for 111 and a touchdown of course he tweaked his hamstring in that game ramondre stevenson totes the rock 24 times mac jones throws three passes well i think mac jones is gonna have to throw the ball a little bit more in this game against buffalo it is a very tough matchup and the toughest matchup belongs to the slot receiver jacoby myers going up against teron johnson Buffalo's very good slot corner. So maybe a downgrade for him. All in all, I really like uh, the, the ground games in this game. Maybe a little Ramondre Stevenson. Brandon Bolden had a nice game against Miami. But Buffalo in particular, Duke Johnson. You saw Duke Johnson from Miami last week. He goes for 117 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Philip Lindsay. Duke Johnson, by the way, coming into this year, had never run for 100 yards in a game. He gets signed off the street and does it twice for Miami. Once against New England, Philip Lindsay goes for 40 yards. Miami gave up over 150 rushing yards to New England running backs. I think Devin Singletary has a shot to stand out in this game based on everything we know about Josh Allen in the cold weather. Very interesting, Joe. Um, on, so on Sunday, the 1 o'clock game will be the Eagles and the Bucks, And it actually looks like, Joe, there's some weather there. Yes. I've been reading some rain um although first of all you got to overcome the weather you got to overcome the odds rewrite the playbook deliver under pressure the mvps of small business lead their team's victory all year long visa is proud to provide playmakers everywhere with more tools to help grow their business help them achieve even greater success because the more people we can empower the more we all win visa a network working for everyone what do you got on the bucks and the birds so, yeah, let's start with uh, the weather. Rick Stroud, of uh, who co who's covered the Buccaneers forever for the Tampa Bay Times. Quote, this is just from two hours ago. Weather will be a factor Sunday versus Eagles. Windy with rain early. Remaining cloudy with showers in the afternoon. This is a 1 p.m. Sunday game. High of 72. Winds southwest at 20 to 30 miles per hour. <laughs> Chance of rain, 70%. Rainfall near a quarter of an inch. Higher wind gusts possible. Finishing with Eagles own number one rushing team in the NFL. Now, these two teams met back in week six. The Buccaneers built a 28-7 to lead uh, midway through the third quarter. And then you might remember, Ross, the Eagles actually made a valiant effort and they cut it to 28-22 and then just kind of ran out of time. Um, they, uh, but Jalen Hurts had two touchdown runs in that game. But. That was still when the Eagles were in this kind of pass-heavy approach. Miles Sanders had nine carries in that game. He was the only Eagle running back to carry the football. 
That is not going to happen this week. I guarantee you that will not happen this week. I think the Eagle running backs, Miles Sanders, who's going to play or is expected to, Jordan Howard, Boston Scott, all three of these guys will be involved. If one of those guys, if maybe Sanders' hand acts up, Kenneth Gainwell is going to be involved. The Eagles are going to try to run the ball. That has been a tough matchup all year against Vita Vea and the boys with the Buccaneers and Levante David, the, the linebacker, designated to return off of IR. So this is going to be a team's offensive strength going against a team's defensive strength. So maybe, just maybe I might be leaning to the under a little bit here because you also look at Tampa Bay. And you look at Tampa Bay, you know, Cyril Grayson's a guy who's come alive for them. Well, he hurt his hamstring last week. His availability is in question. Mike Evans is great, but you know Darius Slay is going to make Mike Evans' afternoon pretty freaking difficult. That's going to be a matchup to watch. So I'm thinking Rob Gronkowski, very important for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this game. Maybe some Cameron Brait, very important for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this game. Also designated to return off of IR for Tampa Bay. Leonard Fournette and Giovanni Bernard, the last time these two teams played, 22 carries, 81 yards, and a two touchdowns for Fournette, six for 46 receiving for Fournette. Ronald Jones is banged up. He's got an ankle. We'll see how much a workload Leonard Fournette can handle. We'll see how much a workload Giovanni Bernard can handle. But I am leaning to the under in Philadelphia, Tampa Bay. I just think Tampa Bay has so many injuries on the uh, offensive side of the football. Meanwhile, Philadelphia's offensive strength matches up well with Tampa's offensive strength. And I don't think Tampa is going to be overly scared of Jalen Hurts throwing the ball with wind gusts of 20 plus miles an hour in this game. I think the weather is going to make this one a sloppy game. That is probably a lot closer than people think. Interesting. All right. What about later that day with the Niners and the Cowboys? Um, all right. So I said entertaining factor uh, Cincinnati Vegas was up there. Well, I mean, we're in the playoffs, so I think most games are entertaining. This one's up there too. And Ross, um, maybe I'm just maybe I'm just having recency bias after watching San Francisco and their comeback against the Rams in Week 18 to to make the playoffs in a game they had to win because the Saints also won. I know the Niners are the six seed and the Cardinals are the five seed. I also know the Cardinals just beat the Cowboys a couple weeks ago. I'd kind of rather, if I was Dallas, I would have rather draw on the rematch with Arizona, then get this San Francisco team. Yes. I mean, look at what they did. They took oh, that defensive front. I agree. Sam, yeah. I, I mean, I think this is a dangerous, dangerous game for the Cowboys. San Francisco's defensive front took over that game against the Rams. They made life hell for Matthew Stafford. Uh, the Rams could not run the football at all last week. Sony Michelle, 21 for 43. Cam Akers, five for three. Oh, I'm not really reading much into Dallas's performance against the Eagles third stringers. I know they came out, Dak Prescott set a record or so. They wanted to get into a rhythm and that's, you know, that's their prerogative. But I mean, I, I don't know how much I can read into Dak Prescott throwing for five touchdowns in that game. San Francisco secondary is the weak point on their team. They saw Ambry Thomas come down with the big interception, but obviously no Michael Gallup for Dallas. Still, I think CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper are going to have to be the guys who make big plays for Dallas in this game. If you're looking to save some money at the wide receiver position on the DFS slate, obviously you go to Cedric Wilson. Five for 119 and two, again, against Philly's backups, but still five for 119 and two last week. Um, he has been a guy who is one of those guys, almost like Duke Johnson. You get the opportunity. Teams are always looking to replace him, or he's buried on the depth chart for obvious reasons in Dallas. But when he gets an opportunity, he puts up numbers. So I think he is going to be an important part of the Cowboys' offensive attack against the San Francisco 49ers. Now, flipping to the 49ers, I talked about a one player per team contests where you can only get one yeah. player from any team. If you're in a pool like that, the most rostered player is going to be Debo Samuel. Because the guy is a machine. Ross, Debo Samuel had six touchdown runs of 10 or more yards this year. He is a wide receiver. That tied for the NFL lead with Jonathan Taylor. That is insane. I mean, they use him, and, and now they're getting him the ball in the passing game again. You know, he makes the big catch, the 43-yarder to set up the game-tying touchdown. I mean, just unbelievable. This guy, Jawan Jennings, by the way, that he's one of those like he he fell in the draft because um because he 
didn't test well athletically, but that's a guy who just knows how to get open. I kind of look, I kind of look at him as a lowercase Van Jefferson, just somebody He's been didn't, making plays. Yeah, he has. And there's another guy, you know, if you're like trying to fill out a DFS lineup or something and Hey, how about Jawan Jennings? You know, um, I think one of the things the 49ers are going to try to do is isolate Brandon Ayuk and or Debo on Trevon Diggs and Teams test Trevon Diggs because Trevon Diggs lets guys get open. Trevon Diggs also tests teams and say, let me bait them. The old Asante Samuel trick, because I'm going to make an interception. That's going to be a fun battle to watch on the perimeter. One other thing for San Francisco, uh, if you're playing DFS, maybe you're playing um, a one and done contest and you want to use players from this game because you don't really know who's going to advance. When Elijah Mitchell plays, Elijah Mitchell gets the football. You know, he comes back in the lineup. He gets 20, 20 plus carries. Um, uh, whatever uh, he's gotten twenty plus carries, Ross, in five consecutive games that he's played in. Um, just a guy who gets the football whenever he's active. Mark him, mark him in for another eighteen plus carries this week against Dallas. Don't think Dallas is going to have a whole lot of success running the football. Yeah, I, I mean, I talked about this on the Even Money podcast. I think the Niners have a great chance to win that game. They have they Absolutely. are a live dog, man. Uh, not yeah. not a team I want to stand in front of. And by the way, you got to keep in mind, Jimmy Garoppolo is playing for his future. Whether it's in San Francisco or not, I tend to think not. But Jimmy Garoppolo with another strong performance, there is going to be a market for that man. I don't know if it's in San Francisco, but he's a starting quarterback next season. So, what about Joe for the Steelers and the Chiefs, the Sunday Nighter? Yeah, this one was uh, not particularly pretty the last time these two teams played. And I, I think anybody would tell you the Steelers are probably the worst team in the playoffs. Um, you know, their defense is playing pretty freaking well, though. Minka Fitzpatrick. How about that play Minka Fitzpatrick made, by the way, on the sideline to knock the ball away from Hollywood Brown? That essentially gave them the opportunity to win the football game against Baltimore last week and then put them into the playoffs. I mean, that guy's playing at a high level. The last time these two teams played, um, Kansas City won the game 36 to 10. Um, I, I know Ben Roethlisberger had the interception. I know he lost a fumble. I know Deontay Johnson lost a fumble in that game. But Kansas City won that game 36 to 10 against Pittsburgh. Tyree Kill was admittedly fatigued because of COVID. He had two catches for 19 yards, and Travis Kelsey didn't play. Well, both those guys are going to be a little bit healthier, although Kel Hill is dealing with an injury. But just keep in mind, he was barely a factor the last time these two teams played. So just throwing that out there when it comes uh, to the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, uh, Clyde edwards Alaire, uh got nine carries in that game. We'll see if he plays this week. But I think Kansas City can methodically dismantle Pittsburgh. Byron Pringle had two touchdowns in that game. Another low-end guy you might consider this week. Ross, I might... Put Najee Harris in my one-and-done lineup just because I expect him to be one-and-done. He had 19 carries for 93 yards, and he had five catches for 17 yards the last time these two teams played. Pittsburgh's uh, offensive line is not opening any holes. Najee's dealing with an elbow injury. But the one thing I will give that guy, man, is he tough. Like, I, you know, I think you could say athletically he hasn't been as impressive as I thought he might be this year. But that one-handed catch he made late in the game on a bad throw by Roethlisberger, I mean, just incredible. And he twists up field, and he picks up a first down to keep the chains moving. Um, just a really uh, high-effort player who I enjoy watching. Um, but Roethlisberger, Ross, cannot throw the football. They run the same play every play. Unless they throw the out to Fryermuth, Yeah, they run the shallow cross – with Claypool Johnson, every single play. And now, about, I, mean, I I wish I was doing. I wish I was calling the Steelers Chiefs because they run the same play every play. <laughs> I would be like Romo. I'd be getting ten million dollars a year to be like, <laughs> just like now they're doing it again. Cross to Deontay Johnson. Well, that that yeah. out pattern to Fryermuth in overtime might have been Ben's best throw of the season. Uh, I mean, he put it right on a dot. But then, uh, but, but Ross, how about this? All of a sudden, like, they're getting 10 targets a game for Ray Ray McLeod. I mean, he must be a player Roethlisberger loves. And by the way, he was the recipient on that fourth down play, that 10-yarder. Roethlisberger throws a 10-yard pass across the middle, shallow cross, to Ray Ray McLeod. Ross, it looked like he just dropped the football. Like, I mean, there is no arm strength on this guy. I got to be honest. 36 to 10. I don't know if I expect that. It's the playoffs. 
I don't expect Pittsburgh to score a whole lot of points in this game. I, I mean, I think it's going to be ugly. I would probably tend to avoid this game from a DFS perspective, um, especially if I'm in a one and done. I might look to a better environment to play Mahomes. Uh, obviously, Tyreek Hill's dealing with the injury. So I, I, I don't know. Uh, if I'm in a one and done, maybe it's Najee Harris, maybe a little Deontay Johnson. Maybe I'll go Daryl Williams if, he, if you don't think Clyde Edwards-Alaire is going to be healthy. But this is probably – actually, uh, it's weird to say from a, from a fantasy perspective, in a game that is involving uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, not a whole lot of appeal for fantasy from, from this one. I think this game could be a little bit uglier uh, than, their, than even their last game was. So all fair points, Joe. All fair points for sure in my mind. Um, before we get to the Monday nighter, where we actually have some interesting news, and I'll be on the sideline for that one. Kurt Warner in the booth. Here's my thing. In fantasy football, you go to fantasypoints.com, use the code 21FEAST. You know why? Because you want to get ahead of things, right? Like you want to know what you're going to do ahead of time. That's the same way with the interior for your car and getting what you need at AutoZone. Simple upgrades like seat covers prevent spills, tears, rips, and UV rays from ruining your upholstery and can even help maintain your resale value. Your car smelling like a locker room? AutoZone has the cleaning products you need to freshen up. Replacing your cabin air filters is another easy job that ensures your car is blowing clean air, especially now that your windows will be rolled up. Make AutoZone, get ready, Joe, your one-stop car interior shop. They've got next-day delivery, same-day store pickup, both free. They carry the best products from the best brands at the right price. Get in the zone. Auto zone. Nice. All right. Uh, Monday night, it's the Cardinals, it's the Rams, and the Rams just signed Eric Weddle while we're recording the podcast no, I'm not joking. Yeah. Eric Weddle, who last played in 2019 and is 37 years old. But they have the injury to Fuller, so I think uh, they're, they're they're trying to sign a guy who's going to come in and help them out right away. And, oh, that's an interesting signing, Ross. I'll give them that. Um, well, we'll see what happens here. Maybe that's a sign that Arizona is going to be able to attack down the field. But, you know, Arizona's offense is just kind of – stagnated here a, a, a little bit in the last month plus um I know Kyler had the good game against Dallas James Connor's back now but Chase Edmonds is hurt there's really not somebody who I trust in Arizona's passing game on the perimeter to really make a ton of plays in this game maybe uh, you know the guy who I actually trust the most in the passing game is Zach Ertz who's been, I, I mean, who's been a phenomenal acquisition. And I think the Eagles would do that trade again because Dallas Goddard has taken off since Zach Ertz has been out of the lineup. So it's just going to be kind of one of those trades that's worked for both teams. And, you know, if the Rams are signing Eric Weddle, well, that probably is a sign that they're susceptible over the middle. I'm looking to Zach Ertz to potentially have a big game for Arizona but I know both of these teams have been kind of Jekyll and Hyde this year. I'll be honest. I think I think um, I think the Rams are set up to win this game with the way Arizona's been playing. The Rams are at home. Matthew Stafford, the last time these two teams played back in Week 14, goes for 287 and three touchdowns. Um, Odell Beckham scored in that game. Van Jefferson scored in that game. And Cooper Cup scored in that game. Uh, Stafford was great in that contest. Sony Michelle grinded it out, 20 carries for 79 yards. By the way, great to see. Just great to see Cam Akers back on the field. I mean, I think that's incredible. And it's hard to it's hard to evaluate his performance last week against the 49ers because even Sony Michelle, who had 21 carries in that game, had only 43 rushing yards. So I'm not going to read too much into Cam Akers' five carries. Not somebody I'm looking at for fantasy. But certainly going to be interesting to see uh, exactly what his status is and how much they rely on him in this game. Tyler Higby out of nowhere scores two touchdowns last week. The problem is for us, for the first time ever, we've got a Monday night playoff game 
we're recording on Wednesday. We're not seeing the official injury reports. So we're not seeing what's the status, you know, of, of Chase Edmonds. Is there anybody on the Rams who's banged up that we've got to worry about? So uh, we're going to have to wait a little bit of time for that. But Cooper Cup went for 13 catches in this matchup. The last time these two teams played, dominating out of the slot. The first time these two teams played, though, he actually had his worst game of the year, five for 64, though he did get targeted 13 times against Arizona. That was all the way back in week four. So Cooper Cup in his two games against Arizona this year had his worst performance in terms of catches and his best performance in terms of catches. I think Cooper Cup's going to lean more towards the best side of that in this game. I expect a fun one on Monday night, and I expect Cooper Cup and Zach Ertz to be the shining stars of it. Interesting. Love it. I, I appreciate the info for the broadcast, Joe. Check him out on social media at FG underscore Dolan. He is the man. Use the code 21FEAST at FantasyPoints.com. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. You can find all the shows always YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Hope you guys have an awesome weekend, whether it's DFS or just watching the games or whatever you do. Any of those leagues that Joe was talking about. I think we're done here. I'm stuffed. Thanks for listening to the Fantasy Feast podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker football podcast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and the College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mention DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 